my handheld mobile device or listening to my local Clear Channel affiliate, I'm definitely tuned to WBAI, listener-supported non-commercial radio in New York City, 99.5 FM. <clears throat> in other news... <laughs> to determine why and how yeah. the towers collapsed. Kind of scary to have this helicopter hovering around. You walk up to him and confront him. They can't stand that. Welcome to another news. I'm Jeff Brady. On this show, we've talked in depth about the idea that most of us are subjugated into a modern slave system but usually with a vague reference to the power structure using terms such as bankers or elites. Our guest, Dr. Sean Ross, brings a tighter focus on those terms through his research exposing the world's most dangerous mafia, the pharistocracy. He says, we are slaves and they rule the world. Their base is Switzerland. According to Sean's research, the last stronghold of the Templars fell on May 18, 1291. Two months later, Switzerland was founded. The Templar treasure was hidden in Switzerland, through which the Swiss banks were founded and all subsequent and future wars are financed. Sean Ross also points out that the families currently in places of control within the Swiss banking system's upper tiers have bloodline connections to ancient Egyptian pharaohs, hence Sean's use of the term pharistocracy. Our guest, Dr. Sean Ross, has been producing hundreds of videos exposing the symbolism, art, monuments, and memorials throughout major cities in Europe, but you'll also get rare glimpses into the backyards of mansions. Some of his visual work reveals hidden courtyards festooned with bloodline crests and occultist artwork. As you may have guessed, producing and uploading this level of high-quality video exposing the secret Swiss aristocracy and the real connections with the global banking system has come at a high price. Dr. Sean Ross has been a political prisoner in Switzerland. He was tortured while in prison and has been homeless for two years. He does need help currently, as you will hear in this interview. His email is swisstorture at gmail.com. Sean, welcome to another news. Thank you. Let's start from the beginning. How did you get interested in researching secret societies and their symbols hidden in plain sight? Well, something in me, you know, since I've been five years old, I always wanted to stop the injustice in the world and the um, and all these wars going on. Um, I saw at a very early age, I saw about the concentration camps and all that. Since a very early age, I, I, I just, you know, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to do something. I'm not just a talker, but I do things. And secondly, I'm from a very rich family, and I saw, you know, what's going on behind the screens, you know, friends of my parents. And, and then thirdly, it's, it's a bit the essence of a martyr. I had very rough times in my life. And this is really a wake-up call for some people, you know, if, it's, if things don't go right in your lives, you know, it's the essence of being a martyr. At some point you were able to determine that there's something going on within secret groups that are controlling the world. How old were you when that realization happened? Um, already at a very early age, you know, it, it started from, from the age from at, at five years old, you know. I see. So, Sean, uh, for full disclosure for listeners at this point, um, it was very difficult to arrange this interview for a number of uh, bizarre reasons, but primarily it's that you're homeless and you, you're actually in a, a McDonald's in France, Strasbourg, France. That's how we're doing this interview. The manager was kind enough uh, to let you use the phone but we've been communicating uh, through Skype and with the six-hour difference, and we managed to just line things up right now. It's almost 6 o'clock in the evening over there. You've been homeless uh, for two years, but you've, you're also making incredible videos and posting them. Just give listeners some context there of, of how you became homeless. Yeah. Um, first of all, my, my YouTube channels are Gure, that's G-I-U-R-E-H, and uh, Chatzifratz, that's C-H-A-T-Z-E-F-R-A-T-Z. 
or you won't remember that. So the easiest thing is to go into a film which is called one of my videos, I've got 700, which is called Auschwitz Made in Switzerland. That's easy to remember. And then you get to my one channel, and if you look there in my channel, you see the videos are like, and then you get to my other channel. And, you know, because I uh, reveal too many things, I'm a historian, so the elite who are in Switzerland, which is their base where all the money is, all the NGOs are in Switzerland, they didn't like it very much, what I was doing. So they sent me an anti-terrorist squad. They arrested me many times. I was a political prisoner because of my videos for five and a half years. They tortured me in prison by um, air de um, oxygen deprivation. My hair turned all gray. I, I got a very bad health. So now I'm in the street since two years with a very bad health. I'm sleeping in forests. I'm, uh, I can't see my wife and children. I've got three children. And... They come about like uh, once a month to, uh, to this French border, and as we don't have any money, we put up the tent with my children, two boys, 17 and 15, and the girl, she's only five years old. So like refugees because of the, um, because of the terror of the Swiss state, and really the base of it all is Switzerland. So the new world order, if there is a new world order, there must also be an old world order. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a new world order. And there are very few people, mostly they are initiated, who know what the new world order is. It's the aristocracy who are still ruling the world, and they have the new world order. And we have to go back at least a thousand years in history, back in history, to find out um, where they come from, what their faces are, what their names are, where they come from. I can tell you what they, where they originally come from. And um, like Mr. Hitler, he said, the Jews, they did it all. They financed the First World War, as many people believe. But it is not true. I'm not a Jew myself, not at all. Hitler was, he was a liar, you know. Actually, the First World War was organized and financed by the aristocracy. It was the Emperor of Germany, William II, who put on a uniform and a helmet with a little obelisk on it, a Pickelhelm, as they say it in German, and he said, now there's a war, and if you refuse, that's what he thought, stupid European, we're going to shoot you in front of a firing squad. There was the Emperor of Austria, Franz Josef, he put on a uniform and a helmet, now there's a war. There was the King of Italy, uniform helmet, now there's a war. The King of England, uniform helmet. There was the Tsars of Russia, uniform helmets, now there's a war. It was the entire aristocracy who always ruled, who pushed us into the war and financed it and organized it. There was no Jew in it. So this is the first thing. So the New World Order, it's, and that was 100 years ago, you know, the beginning of the, uh, the First World War. We, you have to know that in the aristocracy there is a law. This is very important to understand the New World Order. And this law is called the primogenitura. That means only the firstborn son... In French, they call it le droit divin, the holy rule. So only the firstborn son, he gets everything. He gets the castle, he gets the land, the power, the jus prime noctis. That means on the first night of your marriage in the Middle Ages, you had, to send, you had to leave your wife in the castle, and they would bang her, the entire aristocracy. This is what happened. They all, the aristocracy have always been torturing us putting us in the dungeons, uh, terrorizing us, torturing us, uh, raping our women. They've always been doing it. But there were also second, third, and fourth sons, and many, many more, as much as 10 or, or 15 in, in many occasions, with other women other than the queen. So they were not happy at all. And this is why there were many conspiracies in the castles, a lot of backstabbings, poisoning, poisonings, with aconitum, which is a little flower which grows in the European mountains, and it's, um, it's, it's more poisonous than a, than a rattlesnake. Apparently, now, nowadays they say that Cleopatra, she poisoned herself with the uh, aconitum, aconite. Hmm. Uh, it's like night, the word night in it, like night, night, goodbye, finished, aconite. Okay. And um, the, the firstborn son, the duke, the count, the Marquis or the King, he didn't want the second, third, and fourth sons anymore in his castle. 
in the court. It was too dangerous. So he kicked them all out. They were not happy at all. And in the Middle Ages, there were only three things. There was the aristocracy, the people, and the church. And of course, these guys, an aristocrat, they didn't want to uh, seek refuge within the people. Because there you have to work, and you're up to your neck into the cow shit or even the pig shit, and uh, not enough to eat. And an aristocrat basically doesn't work then and still today, and there are millions of them. So they went into a monastery, and at a certain, mon a certain time in the monastery, there were so many of them. They said, we are in a monastery, which is a temple of God, so we are the Templars. And we're going to make a new system that every one of us in the aristocracy can be the king for a period of four, five, or seven years, depending the country in which you are. And we're going to vote. But none of us can vote, they said, because we all know what's going on. And one of them said, ha, 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 ha. I've got a good idea. We let the people vote because they're so stupid. They're never going to understand what's happening. And at the same time, we make them think that the people are ruling. <laughs> so this is, this is what became the democracy. But for us, the people, there is no democracy. It's only for our still aristocratic lords that they can be elected democratically. And that's it, final. And the Templars, where did they go to? The French king, uh, Philippe the Fair, Philippe le Bel, in on a Friday the 13th, this is why we say Friday the 13th as a bad day, he arrested all the Templars in France, but he got hold of only 325. And that was on Friday the 13th of October, 1307. Seven year, years later, uh, many of them got burnt in 1314. So 1307. But as these guys were not stupid, only 16 years before, and th these are very important dates to understand the whole picture of it all. So 16 years before the arrest, there was the first big police action in the entire European or human history, all over France and even abroad. Uh, there was a letter being sent out a month before, which could only be opened on that very date of Friday, the 13th of October, 1307, which they did. It didn't leak out. And they got, what, 325 got arrested. Amongst them, uh, Jacques de Molay, he was the last grand maître of the Templars. And he got burned in Paris. So, 16 years before that, because they saw it all coming, they found it Switzerland on August the 1st, 1291. And 1291 is a very important year, because this is the end of the Crusades. The last stronghold of the Templars in the Middle East was Acres, in French, Saint-Jean-d'Acre, next to a uh, Templar's castle, uh, Crac de Chevalier. And Saint-Jean-d'Acre, or Acres, fell on May 18, 1291. Only two and a half months later, just the time to get back to Europe, they found it Switzerland on August the 1st, which is a national holiday. It's their uh, July 4th. In 1291, which is our founding date. If you find like 1291 in the internet, you know there are Swiss neo Nazis behind it because that's their code. If you add it up, you get the number 13. Like people who are into uh, numerology or sort of uh, these sort of things. Right. And uh, if you look at the Swiss flag, they got the same colors, red and white, you know, as the Templars, only they, the Templars had a red cross as. It's also in Switzerland, in Geneva, they got the Red Cross, you know, to help people, what they say. The Swiss cross is a white cross on a red underground. Actually, the, the same as the Ku Klux Klan, which comes from the Swiss Templars, actually. They got, the, they got a logo of a Swiss cross in it. So this is a, Templ a simplified Templars cross. And Switzerland is the only flag in the world which is a square. It's not long, but all sides are equal length together with the Vatican, and the Vatican, it belongs to Switzerland. And then the Templars afterwards, not very long afterwards, they were the first banks in the world. So, of course, the notorious Templars treasure came into Switzerland, with which they founded the Swiss banks. And this is where all the elitist, tax evasion, you name it, 
you know, the elites in the U.S., they bring their money into Switzerland. They don't pay any more taxes. As an aristocrat, never paid any taxes. So the rich get richer and the poor get uh, poorer because it's all going to be on the back of the poor to, uh, to pay all the taxes, which, uh, which is not going to be paid anymore by the, uh, by the rich people. And this is Switzerland. All the NGOs in the world, they're all in Switzerland. Even the World Trade Organization, their base, their headquarters are in Switzerland, in Geneva. I saw the place. The United Nations are in Switzerland. The Red Cross, the FIFA, UEFA for the soccer, the Olympic Games in Lausanne, the OMS for the doctors, everything is in Switzerland. All the money is there. And this is why the Nazis, who were actually the Nazi Templars, being the reason that they were so interested in occultism. They were digging in the south of France, in Rennes-le-Château, the famous Rennes-le-Château, in Bugarache, where they were waiting in 2012, the end of the world. There were ten thousands of people there waiting the end of the world. These are very special places where the SS, they had a special detachment, which was the SS Annenerbe, with at the head uh, the SS Otto Rahn, and Otto Rahn, he had the same hat as Indiana Jones. And this is where Steven Spielberg, he got the information from and the inspiration to do his Indiana Jones videos. And this is why they always show Nazis who are digging for the Holy Grail and the, uh, and the Ark of the Covenants and all these sort of things, which they were really doing. You know, the Germans, they lost the war. But the Nazis and the Swiss, they won it. The gold reserve of Poland and, and Czechoslovakia, France, it all went to Switzerland, and they never saw it again. Even until today, it has never seen again. There is a big uh, armaments uh, company, the, uh, the Swiss military industrial complex, which is uh, called Erlikon. Even American ships, even today, they still got uh, Erlikon uh, cannons. That's Burle Erlikon. And this military industrial complex, this company, has prolonged the Second World War with at least two years, producing cannons and uh, flak, anti-aircraft uh, cannons and bullets and, and everything, you know, for the, uh, for the Germans. Mm -hmm. And the, the owner of this um, company, his name is uh, Emil Burle, and today he's, it's, it's, it's worldwide known. Today he still has a wide collection of Nazi, stolen Nazi um, art collection of people who can't defend themselves anymore for the simple reason that they are not there anymore. And this is also the reason they murdered all the Jews. The Germans don't really have a problem with the Jews. There never were any pogroms in Germany. It's because of the Templars. And these Templars are aristocrats. And guess where they come from, the, arist the aristocracy? They come from ancient pharaoh pharaonic Egypt, that's where they come from. Seven years ago, they found out with the um, uh, genetic analysis that more than 50% of the Europeans, they have the pharaonic DNA. And, and people are asking themselves, well, how is this possible? Here is Europe, here, I'm sitting in France, here's France, Egypt is over there on the other side of the dip. How is this possible? Well, it's very easy. It's because of the use prime noctis. On the first night of your marriage, you had to leave. Your, they raped your wife, even before you had her. So this is how the aristocracy they injected their pharaonic genetics into the whole of our women. If you understand what I mean. So the aristocracy, they are pure pharaohs, and that's why they, they take decisions in Washington that are not really favorable of the uh, American people. Because you're being ruled by a foreign power, and the same here in Europe. And I can also tell you why they call it the Oval Office. I just want to go back for a minute there uh, before you go into the Oval Office. I think this is one of the most uh, important pieces of your research because very few people are are talking about, about this, uh, specifically what you call the pharistocracy, uh, the pharaoh lineage within some of the Swiss aristocracy. You said there was, um, seven years ago, there was some genealogy test that showed there was ancient Egyptian connections. Uh, can you talk about that specifically? Yeah, well, it was a couple, it was about seven years uh, ago, and 
they talked a little bit about it in the media, but it got hushed down pretty quickly afterwards. Well, you understand why. And the pharaohs are here. And this is why, you know, their descendants, the Freemasons, who who were everywhere in key positions, they always show pyramids, obelisks, the all-seeing eye, Isis, Horus, the symbols of their ancestors. That they are pharaohs. The Freemasons are pharaohs. Maybe except if you have a, like a fifth degree or ten degree, and if you're just useful, uh, you know, like uh, stabbing the people in the back and being part of that organization. But most certainly at the top of this organization, they are purely pharaohs, and this is the way they rule us. Every politician is a Freemason. There's no exception. Only some of them say it and some of them don't. And in the, um, the Freemasons, they have a lot of uh, secret symbology. And one of them is the Vesica Pites, which are basically... Oh, there's a lot of people coming in here. They don't know I'm doing the interview. That's okay. Let's keep going as long as we can, Sean. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Je fais juste an interview avec New York. Alors, Thomas, il sait. Merci, madame. The Vesica Pites is the... Uh, it's like the rings, you know, touching each other. And uh, like Audi cars, you know, there are four rings, or uh, MasterCard or Gucci. And this means we are a, uh, an organization. We are a, um, a chain of rings. And you, stupid European or stupid American, you're standing alone. And we are very organized. You Europeans, you're always, you're always alone. And this is what it means. And in between the rings, there is an oval. You know, if you picture two rings, like Audi, there's an oval being formed. So this is why you have the oval office. There's no other reason. And the pharaohs, this is very important. The pharaohs had two empires. In the south, they had the um, upper Egypt. And in the north, there was lower Egypt, where Cairo is and the, the Mediterranean. Because the Nile, it's upper and lower because the Nile is floating from where it's higher to lower. Yeah? It's always going into the Mediterranean, finally, uh, around there. So the name of Upper Egypt in Demotic, I studied the, the Demotic language. There's a word demos in it, like in democracy, which does not exist. There's only democracy for our aristocratic lords that they can be elected democratically. For us, there's no democracy. They do what they want. So back to that uh, pharaonic empire, Mm -hmm. in Demotic, the word demos is in it, meaning the people in Greek. And they had a written language because the hieroglyphs are only for the temples. So the gods and the demons, they can see the pictures and the uh, the evil uh, images of gods and demons and all that. So the name of the upper Egypt is the Perhet in Demotic. And Per, it means the house, and Het, it means white this is why you have the white house in america and they're all pharaohs and that's why it has an enormous obelisk the washington monument of 110 meters high and the obelisk is the symbol of the pharaonic domination the pharaonic domination yeah and in the north they had the pertasser meaning the red house and they were having a war with each other and the red house they were having a small red crown as the uh, the White House, they were having a, wa- a long white crown. There's a lot of people walking around here. Um, so they were having wars with each other, and they said, "Now we're going to stop doing all these wars because we're going to make the uh, we're going to conquer the world." So they founded the United Kingdom of Pharaoh with the white and the red crown all together, and it is the white and red house of Pharaoh. So when they came to the center of Europe, they said, "This is going to be." Uh, our neutral place in the, in the center of Europe, because we ne- we're never going to make any wars there. It's always going to be neutral, because we, we're going to hide it all there, and all the NGOs are there. It's going to be our base. And this is why there's a German-speaking part of Switzerland, you know, to interact to the north and terrorize the peoples in the north. There is a French-speaking part for the west, you know, to infiltrate the west. Italian-speaking part to the east, to the south, and there's a retro romantic part to the east, so they can go into all directions. But the pharaohs, they also had a third crown, which was the blue crown, the war crown. That's why we have the United Nations blue helmets. So all the peoples 
who do wars for these pharaohs, they've got these three colors in their flags, red, white, and blue, all imperialist colonizing countries, like America, red, white, and blue, England, France, the Netherlands, Russia, it's all red, white, and blue. And red doesn't mean our spilled, our spoiled blood or something, and, and white, the transpiration, uh, and, and blue, our tears. No, it's all pharaonic. Sean, thank you for going into uh, that research. And again, this is uh, just at the top of your head, and this is what you've been looking into and researching uh, for many years and also living the part um, and uh, producing the hundreds of videos that you uh, post online. Sean, can you uh, give out your YouTube handle again and let listeners know where they can find some of your videos? Yeah, so my channels are uh, Gure, G-I-U-R-E-H, and I've got videos on it like Auschwitz Made in Switzerland or Faristocracy, not Aristocracy, but Faristocracy, because the aristocracy, they're purely pharaonic. They got blue blood, they don't talk to us, they only marry with each other. They always had all the power. And before 100 years ago, it was the old world's order of the firstborn son, the king. And since 100 years, or also before, since 1776 in your country, and 1789 in France, uh, we are in the new world order. and and. Really, since 100 years, we are 100% in it. Regarding the pharaohs and the, the lineage and the bloodline that you're pointing out, is there any specific dynasty within the ancient e Egyptian history that uh, is specific to this lineage? There's only one dynasty, and it's called the per -A. The word pharaoh, it comes from per -A. Upper Egypt is the per -het, and per, it means the house. And per a, a, it means big or pregnant. So it means the big house, per a. The word pharaoh, etymologically, it comes from per a. And this is the only lineage there is. Uh, for instance, Paris, it's come from uh, per Isis or per Isis. It means uh, the house of Isis. And you find it everywhere. I explain in my film, uh, The Pharaoh Show, where the word America, a, me, ri, ka, that it is entirely pharaonic. Like a, ah, it means big or pregnant. Me is the word for pyramid. Ri is the word for the sun. And ka is the soul, the word for the soul when alive, buys the soul when dead. So America, when you, when you read it from backwards, from backwards to, to, to forwards, it means uh, the translation is the reincarnation of the big pyramid will take place where our souls will live. Um, I mean, look at the dollar. Oh, they're slamming the doors here. Um, it's, it's hard to concentrate, but I'll do my best. You're doing great, Sean. Uh, thanks, Jeff. It's important to, to wake people up, and that's why I'm doing it. it. It's very hard for me to collect my, my energy, to collect my... my mind. I'm, I'm basically living in this... I'm, all the time I'm sleeping in forest. Uh, I'm very tired. Um, it, it's very difficult. But I want to continue my work, and I can't continue my work because I don't have a place with a computer. So if there's anybody out there who has, like, who knows somebody in Europe or has a house in Europe uh, where I can continue to work, and best is in France because uh, people really leave you alone in France, but they're not very helpful. I need help, and the, world, the, the work I do, I do it for you all. It, it, yes, it's important that the work that you do uh, continues, and hopefully people uh, can uh, reach out to you. But let listeners know how you can be contacted. Um, on my channel, if you punch about us in my channel, uh, there's my email, and there you can contact me. My email is swisstorture at uh, gmail.com. Swiss torture at gmail dot com. That's S W I S S uh, torture. The word torture and at gmail dot com. Got it. Exactly. And my name is Sean Ross. Ross with an H in front of it. My name. I don't do any um, anonymous. I, I I put my name in my channel. That's why I had so many problems. Well, so they send me a 
many times an anti-terrorist squad put me in prison. And uh, yeah. Let's go back yeah. to that, if you don't mind, if we can get into that a, a little bit more, because you're, if listeners need to understand that you're walking around with a camera and you're choosing specific areas in certain cities that have either war memorials, uh, specific sculptures, and you're really breaking it down and showing uh, uh, the detail, the history, the symbology, the numerology, maybe the sacred geometry and the location on Earth grid uh, where these monuments occur. A lot of people don't do that, but also you do connect into the Swiss and uh, the Faristocracy. Very few people have made that connection, and it's extremely important, I think, that, that people know, especially when a lot of researchers are looking into the banking system and what the banking system is really about. So I just want to give a little context there. And from there, you became a target. And was there a specific video that uh, they went after you for? Well, of course, they um, they say, you know, in Switzerland, they say, well, we are neutral and clean. We're so innocent. We never did anything, you know. Th this is what the devil does best, you know, to portray himself as being innocent. And that's what the Swiss always did. What they did, they lied some stuff together because only based upon my videos, they couldn't really put me in prison. I, I went out and I got arrested by, by cops who beat me. And then they said that I aggressed them and these sort of things. They, they just lied a lot of things together. In my, in my entire life, I tell you, I've never seen so many organized lies and so much evil as in Switzerland. I, I would never say this about any race or any people in the world. I've traveled a lot of people. You know, here in France, there are a lot of owls. There are some good people here. They're not very helpful, but on the other side, they leave you alone. So there are good things and bad things. Uh, the manager is French here, let me stay here in his office. But the Swiss, I tell you, I've never seen this. These people are evil. They've, they've got an alliance with evil. And this is why the Nazis, they never took Switzerland. I mean, for the Nazis to invade Poland instead of Switzerland, it's like living to the central bank and rob the snack bar next to it. And I, I can tell you how... They financed the Nazis. This is very important for you Americans. You had the, world, the, the Wall Street crash in 1929. So you have to look at the uh, itinerary, what happened before. I just closed the door again. I have to stand up on its own. It's, it's like a church here. Nobody closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's church. Right. So in 1929, in September... 29th, there was Black Thursday and all that. What happened one month before, one or two months before? This is very important. You had a new president, the big man on the key position. His name was Herbert Hoover. His real name was Hoover, Swiss, of Swiss descent, just like the other Hoover, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. They also call him Gay Edgar Hoover, which he was. With his spell, they always walked around with in, in the same the same jacket and the same collars. That's what homers do. So, two months before uh, Herbert Hoover, he became Bonsoir. He became the president, and so they had the man in the key position, and they wanted to do the Second World War, and then they could do it. So they robbed the American the savings of honest Americans during the Wall Street crash. But the money didn't, didn't disappear. It just ended up in somebody else's pocket. And it went to the Federal Reserve, which is the central bank of, of America. But to transfer the money into Europe to finance Hitler's war industry with it, it needed a central bank of all the central banks in the world. And this bank was founded in Switzerland. It was Hitler's bank. It was uh, founded by uh, Jalmar Schacht. He was a 33-degree Freemason of aristocratic descent, of course. The Nazis never murdered the, the Freemasons. It's, you know, maybe some lower, some lower degrees, but this guy was a 33-degree, and he went on doing it the whole, the whole war. So just a couple of months after the Wall Street crash, they founded the BIS, which is the Bank of International Settlements, in Basel, in the motherland. So that's where your money went to. It never disappeared. 
Uh, and only this explains the incredible rise of the Nazi war industry, which can't be explained otherwise, because the poor Germans, they just suffered a economical crisis of uh, more than 10 years. Children died, people starved. Uh, so they were empty in, in, their, in their bellies. If you're empty in your belly, you're also empty in your head. So they could fill their heads up, you know, th this is one of their tricks. So they could fill their heads up with all the Nazi propaganda and anti-Semitic uh, propaganda, racism and all that. And the Germans just believed it. But they were only the, the, the right hand of it. They were not the head. The head of the whole thing was Switzerland, and they won the war. And it's because of the Templars, who are basically pharaohs. So, you know, the itinerary, you got a new president, Herbert Hoover. I did comparisons uh, in one of my videos uh, with Herbert Hoover and J. Edgar Hoover. They've got exactly the same head. They're from the same lineage, the same people, basically. And then three months after, they had the, the Bank of International Settlements, which is the central bank of all the, all the central banks in the world. And this is how they could uh, steal your money. That's where I went to, to Switzerland. Clean, honest, neutral Switzerland of the Templars. Did you uh, do research on uh, the Dulles brothers and their Swiss background? Alan Dulles, he was the first director of the CIA, yeah. I, I did a film about it, and he's from a Swiss... Uh, not a Swiss-German family, usually they're Swiss-German, but from a Swiss aristocratic Geneva family. Very wealthy, very influential. And he was the, he spent all his, um, the wartime, Second World War, he spent in, uh, in Bern, Switzerland, where I, where I used to live as well, next to Bern, uh, which is the capital of Switzerland. There's the word bear in it, Bern. And a very important thing to do is uh, to, to know um, at the same time, when Alan Dulcey became, uh, I think in 1948, the first uh, director of the CIA, you had another um, uh, a Swiss president at the same time, or just a couple of years after, that was Eisenhower of Swiss descent. So then again, they had all their men, all their, their men on, on all key positions in the United States. It's a bit noisy here, there's a shift of uh, personnel, so... It's a bit hard to concentrate, but I'll go on. Okay, uh, I just want to give uh, listeners a bit of a background here. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if somebody's just tuning in, uh, we're speaking with Sean Ross. His uh, YouTube channel, one of his channels is called Schatze Fratz, C-H-A-T-Z-E-F-R-A-T-Z. -E Sean is a deep researcher in connecting uh, the Pharaoh lineage into the Templars. <laughs> And also into uh, the, the Freemason and the Swiss and the, the dominant uh, society at this point. But also, we're interviewing him at a McDonald's. That's why you'll hear a lot of background noise, and we're trying to, to get through this interview. So we were talking about Alan Dulles. It's a, there's a very important issue connected to it, which, which is the MK Ultra. The Monarch Ultra, the uh, uh, brainwashing uh, thing. All the terrorist attacks at the American shootings in high schools, it's all happening through this uh, project. Uh, MK, it means Monarch. Est-ce que vous pouvez fermer la porte? C'est un interview, je fais quoi? Bang. Okay, I'm quiet now. There was, there was a shift. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it was also 1948. They invented LSD, and they didn't know what to do with it. That's one of the ingredients of MK Ultra. Monarch, uh, monarch uh, meaning a king. So it's the aristocracy. They even put their name into the MK Ultra. They are behind it, you know. And, and they understand these signs. We don't. So they didn't know uh, LSD was also, uh, it was also, it was also invented in Basel, just as the biz, the Bank of International Settlements. They didn't know what to do with it. You know, it's not, it's not necessarily good for a human being. You can't make a, a cream out of it for the, for the skin. You know, what to do with it? And they invested a lot of money in the research. So how commercialize it? And they had an idea because it's a, uh, a psychotropic drug. So they knew at the, fir at the same time the Cold War started off and this new CIA, they needed a drug to extract information from a KGB agent. But to sell this important uh, drug, product, the, the LSD, 
you need a um, experiment or a, a, a sample. It's not ethically right. It's forbidden to do experiments on people. So what did they do? In 1951, they poisoned an entire French town with the LSD. They put it in the, uh, in the flour for the French baguette, the French bread. So, and Le Pont Saint-Esprit, Pont, it means the bridge, and Saint-Esprit, it means the Holy Spirit. It's a bridge from the Middle Ages, built by the Templars. It's 1.2 kilometers, almost a mile. Even trucks drive over it nowadays. It's, it's, it's still there. It's very strong. It's going over the Rhone River, a very big river going through the, almost entire France, or half of France. And... Um, these Templars, they, they never forget any, anything, just like the Swiss. They never forget anything except their own crimes. They, they forget them very easily. So they still had, with this town, they still had some vengeance to, to do because they were betrayed by, by the French people and, and sold out to the French king. And they, they got all rounded up in 1307. They invested a lot of time and energy to, con to construct this bridge, so this was the town they picked out to do this experiment with the LSD to sell this sample uh, to, the, uh, to the CIA. So the people, they, they took their baguette in the morning, put some butter on it or, or some cheese or some um, marmalade or whatever, and they turned completely crazy. Uh, a boy, 11 years old, strangled his grandmother. People jumped off from the, from the third floor. People saw snakes coming out of their stomach. Uh, hundreds of people ended, uh, ended their days in psychiatric wards. They never got out of it anymore. And then the CIA, Alan Dahls uh, at the head of it, and Eisenhower, also Swiss, on another key position, they said, this is a good product, we buy it. And this is what they, do. they, they basically do when there is a, um, a, a high school shooting in America. They are only a pretext to take the guns away the Second Amendment, and here the, the terrorist attacks. Well, I mean, there's a, a Latin saying, a proverb, is fetiat cui protest. That means to whom uh, profit the crime. Well, certainly not the Arabs. It doesn't profit them. You know, they, 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 it only gives them a lot of problems in society and a lot of wars and a lot of bloodshed. They're all geostrategical wars, the opium in Afghanistan, the oil in uh, in Iraq, and that, that's what it's all about. And with the terrorist attack, they can they have a pretext to continue their wars. So the American army, with the uh, psychiatrists, they found out coming back to the MK Ultra, they found out when a American soldier, like during the Korean War or something else, or by the Nazis, by the Gestapo, got tortured, the soldier he got completely crazy. A schizophrenia takes place. Because the pain is too intense and you're all tied up. You want to run away with your body, but you can't because you're all tied up. Your hands, your torso, your, your torso, your legs. So you can only run in your head. And you go to a place in your head where there's no pain, a place where you've never been in your head, as we use about only 20% of our brain resources. So a schizophrenia takes place. An entirely new personality will be created. And this is what they do. They kidnap somebody, like here in Europe, they, they kidnap some, some Arab, a tiny criminal, you know, with, um, a handbag, a stealing handbags of ladies or something like that, or stealing cars or something like this. And they take him out of his cell in the middle of the night. Then they tie him up on a, and bring him to a um, laboratory uh, with the doctors and, and all this, and they administer LSD. And then they start to torture him. So the schizophrenia, the new identity will take place. The guy, he gets so crazy. He goes to this part of his brain where there's no pain. And a new page, which is completely blank. You know, there's no, it's, it's white. So they can fill it in the way they want. So they put some goggles with a video on the guy's head. And they show a bearded Muslim who empties his um, assault rifle is AK-47 in the middle of Paris. When they're finished with this guy or uh, somebody from the Columbine High School, and they all had uh, Prozac, they were all on Prozac and, uh, and other um, antidepressants, well, when they're finished with this guy, the only thing they can do is empty their um, assault rifle. 
And this is why uh, there were very serious uh, witnesses in Paris, in big new English newspapers, who witnessed after the, the shooting, these guys were just standing there, like, mission accomplished, there's, there's not, no more in the heart is, finished, end of story. The it. same thing, and then the cops came, you know, dirty cops, and they killed the, uh, the truth, most of it all because the man alive would have been worth far more than dead. The same thing happened in Nice. We all see the picture of the guy sitting in his truck, and he's just sitting there with 20 cops around him, and they just shot him to pieces. This guy didn't even know what, where he was. He didn't know what to do anymore. It just mission accomplished, nothing more in the heart is. And, and they murdered the, uh, the truth, most of all. And if you look at the, uh, the Nice uh, killings of um, about 100 people, you know, you can, you, you, can look, you can look it up in Google now. More than 50% of the victims are Arabic. They're Arabic, you know? They're not even Europeans. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, look it up. It's all a lie. Everything is a lie. And their base is Switzerland of it all, where it's all, you know, the, the, the Swiss... You know, Hitler said once, if, if I want, I can take Switzerland with the fire department of Berlin. You know, he was joking, yeah? My film, Auschwitz Made in Switzerland, it starts with a very rare picture of Mr. Hitler when he was in Zurich in 1923, where he was financed by a Swiss general called Ulrich Wille, who married into the high German aristocracy of uh, von Bismarck. So this is, this is why the Nazis, they never invaded Switzerland. But nobody wants it because it's the base of Pharaoh. It's the base of the Nazis. It's the base of the Templars. That's where they went to. You know, here, I'm here in Strasbourg, and in Strasbourg they got a school, which is called Lena. All the, all the French presidents, it's a president school. They all go there. It's called uh, L'Ecole Nationale de l'Administration. They got, they got two schools. Even international presidents, they attend this school. Maybe some American presidents, they went here as well. And guess what? This school here in Strasbourg, they got two of them, one in Paris and one in Strasbourg, which is the European capital together with Brussels. And guess what? It's in a former Templars commandery. And I went there, I filmed that, I put it on my YouTube channel, maybe you saw it. What's the title? Lena, so E-N-A, uh, Strasbourg um, Templar commandery, something if you, if, you, if you punch these keywords in it, it pops out. I'll look for Even it. it. Yeah. Of course, immediately the uh, security guys in uniforms, they came out only because I was filming there. Well, you know, you know, this type of things. Yeah? Because I talked very well. The, the, the night before, I talked with the, uh, the chief security. He was a former cop because I talked about the Templars. He liked very much what I was saying. He thought he could learn something, yes. which he apparently did, of course. So he invited me in. <laughs> so, so because I did some good talking. If he, if he would have known who I really was, he would never. He would have, you know, they would have arrested me. So he let me in. And then because he was so proud, you know, because I talked about the Templars, he drew his uh, his Android or you know I, iPad or iPhone, whatever the name is, smartphone. And very very proud as he was, he showed himself in a in a Templar's dress with the gladio with the Templar sword. And uh, wow. he said, I'm a Templar. We still exist. You know? So I profited from the situation. I asked him, for you Templars, what does Switzerland mean? What does Switzerland represent? Without hesitating, he said, the refuge. That's where we went to, the hideout. But of course, I couldn't film that. But um, he told me that I had to be very careful, you know, not to overdo it. Sean, one of the uh, recurring symbols is the octagon, and would you tell listeners why that shape is uh, significant and how its geometry is found embedded in much of the Freemason and Knights Templar symbols? Good question, Jeff. Thank, uh, thank you for uh, reminding me. Excellent. Yeah, I went this year to a... I haven't uploaded... Um, yes, I uploaded it. I went to many Templars' commanderies. Some of it, it, it was very dangerous. I was lucky to um, to came out of it alive. Uh, I was in the Templars' commandery and the chapel of the Templars in Laon, which is a uh, a town in the in the north of France. There, in France, there are really thousands of Templars' commanderies and chapels and Templars' farms. There are thousands of them. They were the first multinationals, and this one, a uh, peculiar one, and uh, normally they should all be uh, octagonal. It really was octagonal. Why? 
Because if you draw a line around a Templar's cross or around a Swiss cross, the same thing, you get an octagonal form. And uh, so a Templar's commandery, it should be done uh, in an octagonal form. And even in the Bible, you know, in the revelations of uh, John, they, they talk about that the seventh beast is also the eighth beast, uh, you know, like uh, uh, presenting the octagon, the eighth beast. And they, they talk about that the, uh, the beast has, well, the whore of Babylon is sitting on it. And this beast is scarlet, which is the Vatican, many people think. And she, Isis, of course, the whore of Babylon, and Switzerland, the Templars called it, they gave the name of Switzerland. As they were speaking French, they called it Suisse, Suisse. It's the French word for Switzerland. And Suisse, it means Sir Disis, the sisters of Isis. And then the Swiss Germans, they call it Schwitz, uh, Schwester de Isis, which became Switzerland from Schwitz, Switzerland, uh, or many in, uh, before in English language, many people called it the land of the Switzers. So these Isis, or the, the whore of Babylon, sitting on that beast, that means the beast is the Vatican, and that means the Vatican belongs to Switzerland. They have a Swiss police in the Vatican. They have a Swiss guard only. They are the rulers of the Vatican. Because the Templars, they, got, they are the military wing, and to consolidate their powers under peace times, they needed a political wing. So they founded the Freemasons. And they also needed a religious wing, which is the Vatican, also under Swiss control, as it is pictured even in the Bible 2,000 years ago in the Revelations of John. And, um, and they also have a financial wing, of course, the Swiss banks and uh, uh, founded with the, the Templist treasure. And the Templist treasure, they came from the pyramids. And as they knew that their ancestors, they still had a lot of goodies over there. And they didn't share it with the French kings. He was, he was pretty um, annoyed by it and arrested them all because they didn't share it, one of the reasons, and they wanted to have all the power. Yeah, so th this is why it's Octagon. And you can see this in my film, Octagon, the Empire, of darkness on my channel Chetsefrat. And most of the, the badges of uh, police forces, army forces, they are octagonal. The, the cops in New York City, they got an uh, octagonal cap. It's because they are Templars. They don't care about the people. They are like the slave drivers with an octagonal Templars cap. Uh, the English bobbies they also have on their bobby hats. They got an octagonal form. I was arrested in Auschwitz because they didn't want to let me out in. I filmed it on my YouTube channel, and uh, because I had my big backpack, two backpacks with you know, I was there in the winter in Auschwitz, and uh, they said, well, you, you can't come in with your backpack, so you must leave it in that little house there. I said, I'm not going to leave leave my stuff there. I need my tent. If I lose it, I'm dead. I hitchhiked all the way there. It took me a whole week through Czechoslovakia and Austria and uh, south of Poland, in Oswiecim, as they call it, Auschwitz. So I didn't leave my stuff there, and I, I tried to get into Auschwitz, you know, like skipping the fences. So I made one fence and a second fence. I was in, and I got arrested by the internal Auschwitz police who had an octagonal badge. So I know that the ones who killed all those poor people in there and murdered and tortured them, it's still the same ones earning money with it. The whole town of Auschwitz, they're living off it. The hotels, the restaurants, the, the, the everything, the whole town lives on it. And it's still the same ones. That's what I learned by seeing that octagon badge, which you can see on my YouTube channel. The Germans lost the war, but the Nazi Templars, they won it. They're still there. And they are behind the, the terrorist attacks, and we have to wake up. It's already too late, I think. You know, we have to wake up and do something because it's all a lie. And we, as they pointed out in the Georgia Guidestones, well, they're going to diminish humanity until 500 million only, and they're going to do it. Just as Hitler, he announced everything in his book Mein Kampf. They announced everything in the Georgia Guidestones. We're in the state of Georgia. They're going to kill us all. Stand up before it's too late. And the information is the only weapon we have um, at this moment, because where are you going to aim at if you don't know the face, their name, where do they come from? And you can find it in my videos. And I want to do it. I did it in French in a video which is called Enfer Suisse Satanique. 
I put it all together in one two-hour video, a very densely, and I want to do that in English too, so you only have to watch the two-hour video, but I don't have a place where I can work. So please, somebody stand up and contact me. And So um, I don't have a passport, so I can't make it to the U.S. Uh, here in France, if you know somebody, um, or, or, or in Belgium, or in Italy, or in Luxembourg, there's about some places where I can go to. I want to continue my work, and I do it for you. I do it for humanity, for our children. I also have three children. And I want to tell you um, how they got, this is very important too, how they got rid of the, uh, the old world order. Well, the old world order, the king of France, he was very, very strong, and he had his men everywhere. The last king was uh, Louis, Louis, VI, Louis the Sixteenth. So how to get rid of him? By the second, third, and fourth sons organizing in the Freemasons and the Templars. As he was too strong, and he had his eyes on the people everywhere through loyal ar aristocrats, they couldn't get him. He was, you know, he was the king, after all. He had an army at his uh, disposal. So they used an in intermediary. So they tortured the French people. They took all their, their food away. They got crazy. They were tortured by Swiss mercenaries, which is a historical fact in uh, La Bastille, the French prison in, um, in Paris. So the people finally stood up when they saw their, 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 their children dying. Just the same thing as they did with the Germans before the Second World War, as they did with the Russian before, you know, the, the Russian Revolution and the, the Red Terror. Uh, they always starve the people to death first so they get crazy, so they can put all information into their head. So the people stood up against the king. He lost his head. He never understood why, because he thought being good to the people, though he could never go and see uh, if the people would really, were really doing well, but he was lied to. So until the very last moment when his head fell into the basket and his wife, Marie Antoinette, from Austria as well, he never understood why. And this is why the New World Order took place in 1789 in France and a couple of years in 1776, entirely organized by Lafayette and the French, uh, the American New World Order, uh, America was founded in 1776, organized by the French aristocracy, basically, even before their own New World Order a couple of years, uh, 13 years later, 1789. So this is why the French, they said, they took the slogan, Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité. That means freedom, liberty, uh, equality, égalité, and fraternity, fraternity, which is not for us. There's no freedom for us. If there's a war, they push us in a war. You have no choice, or they shoot you. Uh, if they go for your, for your identity card, you have no choice, or they shoot you. So liberty, it means we, we, the aristocracy, including the second, third, and fourth sons, this is the slogan of the New World Order, uh, we, the aristocrats, we have all the liberty to be the queen, the king for a period of four, the president, yeah, for four, five, or seven years. And fraternity, there, there are no more uh, brother killings. We're all brothers. F uh, fraternity, no more brother killings between the second, third, and the fourth sons and the, the firstborn son who got all the power. And equality, we are all equal. There's no more difference between the firstborn son, the second, third, and the fourth sons. In the Middle Ages, we had thousands of years of wars only because of this, but we didn't know this, only because one lord or the second and the third wanted to have the power, and we had to fight their wars. And this, the first and the second world war, it was all about this. It was, it was not about anything else. It was only an internal quarrel of our feudal masters from, from ancient Egypt. And this is why I went there one month ago. I went to uh, Colmar, which is a little bit south of Strasbourg, where uh, Frédéric um, Auguste Bartholdi, the guy who, can, who made the Statue of Liberty for America, where he lived, and there's also a Statue of Liberty. So the next time I've got the occasion, I'll... I'll I'll upload that for you. I filmed it. Okay. And so this, this is why they call it the Statue of Liberty, because of the French slogan, Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité. This is why. So all of, all of them, 
can be the president for another four years. This, this is what the Statue of Liberty means, and I can tell a lot more about it. Yes, Jeff. First of all, thank you for uh, the courageous uh, research that you're doing. And it, again, it's not without consequences. This is uh, very difficult work that you're doing. Could you give listeners, again, uh, your contact information, your email? Too bad it's over, Jeff. I can talk for another two hours. I've got some more important things to say. Well, uh, we would definitely want to have you back on to, okay. to, to continue this. I'm happy to do that. Yes, I'll give you my, uh, my email again. Thank you, Jeff. That's going to do it for In Other News. I'm Jeff.